Hey folks, Chris Vandeviver here with WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. And today I want to dissect the differences between bouncing your tracks versus freezing your tracks versus powering your tracks on or off. And this was a question that was suggested by a reader named Ben H. So Ben, I really want to thank you for suggesting this as a video. So the three options that I just suggested, freeze, bounce, or power on off, we typically look at these options when we need to conserve CPU. Say you have a session that's gotten pretty big in size. There's a lot of tracks, 40, 50, 100, lots of software instruments, plugins, automation. Most likely in this scenario, your MacBook is, it's feeling the squeeze. It's feeling the pressure of your session. You hit spacebar to hit play. It plays for like half a second, then it stops. You see the stupid beach ball spinning around and then you get the system overload message. And every time you hit spacebar, it just won't freaking play. So now you have a choice. You can either break your computer or use some of these options I suggested. So let's start with those options. What it boils down to is, is either bounce or freeze. Your goal is to reduce the CPU load so you can play back your session and work on it. Power on off is not really an option. I mean, maybe potentially, but but not really. And I'll And I'll explain that. So I have a voiceover track here and imagine I've got like a bunch of other tracks underneath and I'm at that point. I can break my computer or I can try to reduce the load. So I'm going track by track and asking myself really just one question. Am I ready to commit my plugins and my automation, everything I've done on this track to a brand new audio file? Because most likely I'm never going to touch any of these plugins or automation or fader values ever again. If yes, then let's use bounce. But if no, if I'm not ready to print my compressor and EQ and effects to my track because maybe I want to adjust it later, most likely, I mean, let's be honest, like 99% of the time, you're going to be adjusting things all over the place over and over and over again for a while. In that case, I would use freeze, which is noted by the snowflake icon in the track header. So let's start with bounce. I got my voiceover track. I'm happy with it. I'm not touching it ever again. We can use control B to bring up the bounce dialog. And I'm going to bounce this region in place. I'm going to make sure bypass effect plugins is off because I want to include my plugins in this bounce. And I'm going to make sure to include my automation because I want that included in this new audio file. Hit OK. We have a new audio file and you can see that there's no plugins on this new track. And if I open the automation, none of the automation is available on this track because it's been printed. It's there. It exists within this audio file. At which point I can go to the original voiceover. I can bypass the plugins, power it down and hide the track. And now that's going to be saving me a lot of CPU. If you do this across like, you know, half of your session, but let's say that I'm not at all ready to commit to these changes, right? Like most likely you're going to want to adjust a plugin parameter or two. So in that case, I would use freeze. So freeze, like I said, is noted by the snowflake icon. And freeze essentially creates a temporary bounce. It doesn't create a new file. It just bounces your track in place on the same track lane. So if you need to adjust something later, you can turn freeze off. If you don't see the freeze icon, use option T to open the track header menu here. And we have freeze right here that can be added or subtracted from the track header. Okay, I'm gonna hit the snowflake icon here, hit spacebar to play back. It is frozen the track. It's not often that fast. And now when I try to access these plugins, I can't. It's letting me know that freeze has been enabled so I can't touch them. And if I try to edit this track, the track is protected and can't be changed. So Logic will ask me like, hey, do you want me to unfreeze this so you can edit it? But you know, it's a good safeguard when you're trying to keep things uh, light on the CPU. So then you have two options within freeze. If you go to the track section here in the inspector, you can either set freeze mode to pre-fader or source only. Now pre-fader is everything before the fader here. So that includes all your plugins. But in the case of source only, your plugins are accessible it's just what's on the arrange page that you can't touch. So let's again, try to delete this end here, still frozen. So 
I'm sure you're asking yourself, when would source only be helpful? Why would you want what's on the arrange page frozen, but not the plugins? Well, let's bring in an instance of a software instrument. We'll bring in Ultra Beat. Okay. And I'm going to use my pencil tool to introduce a region. We'll add just a couple notes. Okay. Now let's set this to source only and let's freeze it. So I can't edit this region without it telling me it's frozen. And if I go into the region, I try to edit one of these notes, it's telling me the track is frozen. So it's not really editable unless you unfreeze it. And I can't actually open Ultra Beat. And that is the beauty of source only is that when you have a lot of virtual instruments, if you free source only, you can still introduce plugins onto the track. You just can't edit the instrument, which is most likely very CPU heavy. So that's that option. The third option is powering on and off, which is noted here by the power on off button. And if you don't see it, once again, you can use option T to introduce the power on off button. So the logic manual states that you can maybe possibly save some CPU by turning your tracks off using the power on off. And you, one would think that if you're turning the track off, everything related to the track, including the plugins and the input should be turned off as well, right? I mean, you're turning it off, but it turns out that that's not at all the case of how it works. And it's very confusing. Why would you ever want it to not turn everything off? Let me show you. So it's, this is my voiceover track. And I'm gonna set the input to input one. And I'm gonna make sure that we have software monitoring on so we can see my voice. You can see my voice down here in the meter. Okay, and you can see that the compressor is reacting to my voice here. Let's turn this off. And let's see that I'm still talking through the meter and I'm still being processed through the compressor. So power on off doesn't actually turn anything related to the channel off. It just turns what any regions on the arrange page that are on the track lane for that track, that's what gets turned off. You can see it's been muted. So what the heck, what's the point of that? As far as I put together, the point is, is say you've recorded a vocal take, you're very happy with that vocal take, but you wanna try some other things out and you wanna hit playback and you wanna try some things out through your channel strip. Well, you're not gonna be very successful if this track in the track lane is also playing back while you're trying to try new things out over the track. So that's what power on off is for. You can power off this region and still process your voice and still try things out. And the same thing with Ultra Beat here. Let's uh, power this Ultra Beat channel off. But let's turn on the step sequencer within Ultra Beat. You can see here that Ultra Beat is still being played through the track. So that is my best guess at powering on and off. Turn off what's on the arrange page so you can test out other ideas within the context of the song without deleting what's here. So you have really two options for saving CPU, bouncing to commit to more permanent changes or freeze for more temporary changes. And power on off is really just for turning whatever is in the arrange page on or off. Maybe it'll save you some CPU because it's not sending audio to any plugins on the channel, but otherwise it's not really an option. So I hope that was helpful to you. And if it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel or subscribing on the website, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new materials to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.